Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today there was an update to one of my favorite pieces of software, that is Affinity Designer. Alongside Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo was also updated. Version 1.9 was released for both of those products on both Windows, Mac, and also on iOS. These are excellent painting applications and they all got the 1.9 treatment today. The nice thing is with this 1.9 upgrade, if you are an existing customer, you got the upgrade for free. By the way, uh, they're also currently on sale. We'll get to that at the end of this video, but if what you see looks interesting to you, do be sure to check out the store. It's currently 50% off and these are really, really, really reasonably priced pieces of software. And to be honest, I use Affinity to Designer every single day. I love this package. So let's go take a look first at each application. The first one here, this is Affinity Photo. This image you see in front of you, this is 200 megabytes in size, and you may notice the performance is nice. Very good performance on this app. Well, one of the updates here was for uh, Windows users. It got uh, GPU acceleration finally. So as you can see here, a nice, good, solid performance working around with it. I definitely appreciate that. This one, Affinity Photo, is basically your Photoshop replacement. It's used for doing photo updates, uh, raster drawing, and that kind of stuff. The other one that we're going to look at today, that is this guy right here. This is Affinity Designer, and you can see in action it uh, this is one that if you ever watch any of my Inkscape videos, whenever I talk about Inkscape's performance, I compare it to Affinity Designer. And when you start comparing the two together, you just, you'll appreciate just how fast Affinity Designer is. This guy right here is a vector graphics application. You can see here, kind of layered together. Uh, so if you need to do type-based, I, I basically, I use this guy for every single thumbnail I ever create on this channel. And, um, I look forward to new updates on it because it is just a great program. So if you're going for that vectory graphics kind of look, you're looking for an alternative to Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape. Well, this is your idea. This is your guy right here. So uh, this guy right here, Photoshop replacement or uh, painting application like Krita, uh, you would instead use something like Affinity Photo. And for the uh, vector graphics side of things, Affinity Designer. Now, there's a nice overlap and commonality between them. Um, Affinity Designer also supports Photoshop style plugins, so it is nice in that regard. And that is just a quick look at both applications. I'm not going to go hands on with either. I've covered them both in the past if you want to learn a little bit more. Instead, we're going to look at what is actually new in this 1.9 release. And the nice thing is, Affinity put together these nice five things you should know releases about what what each application has. So in 1.9, a new feature is linked layers. You now have the ability to duplicate linked layers, then unlink particular attributes, which is beneficial for composite work. If you want to take it further, you can also link specific attributes of completely different layers, then manage everything on an intuitive links panel. There's the astrography stacking. Uh, in 1.9, you are now able to stack deep sky photography imagery, including fits documents in addition to raw files. This makes Affinity Photo one of the few cross-platform apps that can perform the entire astrography post-production workflow. Okay, that one's very specialized. Uh, this one, again, was very nice. So again, when you saw me using this app, this guy has a lot of filters and layers and such going on, and the performance is very, very nice. That is gotten come down to this. Now, this is going to be new on Windows only. Uh, Mac already had it in the form of metal compute. But in the world of uh, Windows, you now have hardware acceleration uh, for raster-based operations such as compositing pixel layers, adjustment layers, live filters, and raster tools. Uh, so that is definitely nice to see there. Uh, we got the new pattern layer. You can create endlessly repeating patterns, patterns by simply painting into the bounds of this new layer format. Rotate, shear, scale, clip, and mask it for some fantastic design ideas. What's more, you can also create pattern layers from existing raster layers, giving you another approach to bitmap pattern fills for architecture and other design workflows. As you can see there. And studio presets. You can create, save, and recall different interface layouts with ease. You'll find incredibly useful if you have multiple users that prefer different layouts or if you have a specific workflow setup you wish to toggle between. And then there's more. Uh, live Liquidify. Uh, you have the ability to perform Liquidify option operations non-destructively using a live filter layer uh, rather than committing your changes to a pixel layer. Live Liquidify is kind of cool. It basically turns what's underneath your uh, cursor to goo. So you're basically painting as if uh, painting on liquid. In the most awkward uh, equivalent I can think of is like the T800 or T900, T900 from uh, Terminator 2. You're sort of painting that way. Uh, LUT improvements, external file linkings, custom brushes from layer selection, divide blend mode, uh, 
that yeah so basically that's the big things in 1.9 i will link this down below if you drill to the bottom of it you will find uh links to the update themselves and how you can go about updating it. In my case, I own one. I don't know why I bought it on the Microsoft Store. The updates are already live there as well, so you can update that way. Or if you got it directly from Affinity, you can grab it that way as well. Uh, and then we're going to get into the five things you should know that are new about Affinity Designer. Um, in this particular case, there's the new contour tool. Uh, this looks more like a scaling tool to me, to be honest. So here we are. Let's say I have a shape like so. Like that. Let's fill that guy so you can see what I'm talking about. All right. So there is our shape. With the new contour tool, you basically can grab anything and sort of scale it at the contour around the edges. There's definitely some uses I could see for this immediately. For example, if you wanted to do uh, like an actual drop shadow, I could do something like I could take this guy here um, and we could do a duplicate of it. Like so. We could grab that first guy then. We could make it slightly different color like so and then we could use the contour tools to kind of create a new thing underneath it but that was one of the definite new tools there uh, they show how you can use it in more advanced manners you'll see when it's selected there's a number of different options for changing how the caps work on the contour tool at the top there so i guess it's not live you can change how the uh, edges work again it doesn't seem to be a lot live uh, but you've got uh, controls over it across the top. Oh, there. Let's see. Maybe I have to change the radius out and then change the... No. Okay, i got to play around with it a bit later. This video will actually walk you through what you can do with the contour tools. There are some options across the top. And you can get into this creating this weird uh, blob tool. Again. So it really like, is a see there. Way just to potentially create some shapes and patterns. That's using the contour tool. More advanced stuff there as well. Uh, we have select object and select same. So handy new feature, you can effortlessly select all objects of a particular type, all symbols, all pixel layers, all shapes without a stroke, etc. cetera, uh, by going select object. And then you see you got this nice little menu of the types to select all of. And then you can select same, uh, same kind of concept. You can now locate and edit attributes such as fill color, stroke color, straight, uh, stroke weight, transparency, blend mode, or shape type by selecting all instances within your document as you can see right there. Uh, you got the ability to create custom brushes from a pixel layer. You got the ability to link and package files on the desktop only. Uh, this gives you, uh, you, can, you now in publisher opening, oh, no, we'll keep going on from there. Uh, we can do studio presets, sort of like the other one. So you can have your own little presets that you can work with, especially if you're switching between users or workflows. And then we've got uh, designer now contains two new time saving modifiers for the node tool, which allows you to instantly straighten a curve or delete a segment to create two separate curves within one curve object. 1.9 is now possible to snap to pixel selection bounds, which is essentially useful when working with floor plans and other uh, similar documents. Um, we've got additional path text controls, make it possible to avoid uh, flowing text onto both sides of a curb and to hide under flowing path text if desired. External display support for the iPad version and then designer on all platforms now supports hierarchical control of anti-aliasing, especially useful for pixel artists and for applications where the output must not be anti-aliased. This one, this option right here was basically purpose-built for pixel artists that want your jaggies to look like your jaggies, damn it. So that is the update here. 1.9 versions of uh, both Affinity uh, Photo and Affinity Designer are now available. Free upgrades for existing users. And in terms of people that have not used, if you are out there looking for a Photoshop alternative, you hate the idea of subscription-based software, well, right now is the perfect time. They've got their stuff off, 50% off for because of COVID. COVID went on for a very long time, so they extended the sale outwards. So you can still get everything 50% off. So what are we looking at to buy either of these products? Well, Affinity Designer is $35 Canadian. You were talking like 20, 25, 30 bucks US one-time purchase. You do have to buy it per platform. That is the only negative here. Uh, but really, you're looking at a $30 purchase here at the current price. And even at regular price, you're looking at about 60 bucks US. So 30 bucks, uh, that's, that's amazing. It's the same deal for photo right here. You'll find it 30 bucks US, $35 Canadian. Uh, it is hands down. It's, uh, Affinity Photo, I, I don't use it quite as much. I, I don't do that much work there. Affinity Designer is single-handedly the best vector application I have used. I find uh, Adobe Illustrator to be too much for me, and I find Inkscape to be too clunky. This of the three bears is the one that is just right. I can't more strongly recommend Affinity Designer. So if you were ever thinking about picking it up, 
50% off is pretty solid. And you get these updates for free, which is pretty sweet too. So anyways, that is it. The update, let me know what you think. Do you use these applications? What do you think of them? Do you recommend them as well? That's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.